Hi everybody, welcome to video number seven. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to download a Landsat image from the USGS Glovis server. And then we're gonna learn how to locate an image within by latitude and longitude and download the Landsat image and unzip it so that we can use it in subsequent uh, band ratio analysis. Okay, so let's go to our web browser, uh, Firefox. And I'm going to just go ahead and search uh, download Landsat Glovis. And that should bring me to the USGS Global Visualization Viewer, or Glovis. I'll click on that. Um, beware, depending what browser you're using, you might run into a lot of issues with Java. Um, I had to download a new version of Java. Of course, you may have to click to activate it. But you can also just try try going to this link, the Glovis Next interface, and this is what we're going to be using anyway. So you might as well try to go straight to this and see if it lets you lets you go ahead. I'm going to decline to take the tour, and the first thing I'm going to do is zoom in to the geographic area where I want to download the image from. So that's going to be uh, right here in the Southern Champlain Valley. Going to zoom right into the Middlebury area, kind of Virgen's Middlebury. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually, the first thing I'm going to do is log in before we go any further. Um, now, you may need to create your own login information, or you're welcome to just use mine, uh, which might work, but you may want to create your own account as well. So, my information is Whamadon. And my password is the word Champlain, and then the numbers 09. So Champlain 09. I'm going to hit Sign In, and we're back. OK, great. Now I'm, now I'm able to download. Hopefully, you're able to get signed in as well. So uh, I'm going to choose the button for Landsat 7. There's a lot of different satellite imagery available, but I happen to know that I'm interested in a Landsat 7 image. So I'm going to turn that on, and it looks like it has 1,600 scenes of this particular area. That's a lot. Um, now I, I've, I'm going to add an additional constraint of date. I also know the image I'm looking for is from August of 2002. So I'm going to limit this to images between uh, basically January and December of 2002. And then I'm going to even further go down here and just tell it, you know what, I'm looking for August of 2002. And I'll hit Apply. If things go well, it's going to limit the number of scenes. And it looks like we've got eight possible scenes. Um, just so you know, if you did want to browse those other scenes, you can scroll out here with your mouse. I'm using the mouse wheel on my mouse. And then you can um, use this next or previous button to kind of jump around and scope out the different images. Um, in this case, it actually brought up the image we wanted right away. It's collected on August 30th, 2002. So that's the scene we want. Um, now I'm going to hit this download button and we're going to try to download the scene. So here it comes. It's giving us lots of different choices. Um, these are mostly just images, kind of JPEGs that are pretty small files. We're looking for the actual full GeoTIFF data product. This is going to have all the different Landsat bands on it in a format that's compatible with ArcGIS in that GeoTIFF format. All right, so hit download here. And it popped up this interface. I'm going to save the file. Hopefully, it's going to give me an option for where to save it. It did. I'm now going to navigate down to my, uh, my personal folder in the GIS uh, GG students folder. So you may have mapped yours hopefully right into your own personal folder. I've got to find mine. But uh, again, this is going into your personal folder, not into the class course folder. 
So we don't have a lab2 folder yet inside of your, your personal folder. So let's just make ourselves a lab2 folder. And then within that, I'm going to make two other folders, one called output, like we, already, like we always have, and then another called uh, tutorial. And then within tutorial, I'm going to make another one called Landsat. So just to clarify, you've got your Lab2 folder, you've got Output, Tutorial. Then within Tutorial, you've got a Landsat folder. And that's where we're going to go ahead and save this big zipped file. Now this file is going to take a minute to download. And in that minute, I suggest you go take a look at this. <laughs> Pretty tight. I'll let you decide if you want to watch the rest. So meanwhile, back at the ranch, we can see that our download has finished. And I'm going to go find that in my Windows Explorer drive. Go into my Lab 2, Tutorial, Landsat. Here it is, it's quite a big file, 270 megabytes, and it's currently zipped two times over. So I'm going to right click on it. I like to use 7-zip to extract it, but if you don't have 7-zip, you could also um, extract it with other softwares, or you could use, uh, you could download 7-zip. All right, so I'm going to use 7-zip. I'm going to just go extract here, and that should extract it right into this very same folder and we're just gonna wait for that to finish okay so that initial extraction has finished um, we now have a second file which is actually a tar file that needs to be actually unzipped a second time so I'm gonna right click again and again use 7-zip to just extract here and it's gonna now extract all the individual band images from that file so we'll wait for that to finish. OK, so we've now fully extracted everything. I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup first. I'm going to highlight uh, these first two. That was the original two zipped files. And I'm going to delete those, because those are very large and we don't need them anymore. Now looking at what's left, um, we've got a couple of text files. And those all have important metadata information in them which we'll talk about in a later video. The main data, and by the way, we can, we can get a look at the file sizes. So you can see these text files are very small, uh, 43 kilobytes, 19, 9. And you can always tell what the big data files are by looking at how big they are, 55 megabytes here. And now you'll also notice they all have the .tiff extension. So those are the actual data files, the images. And they've got these long prefixes. But what really matters to us is this last B1. That stands for band 1, band 2, band 3, band 4. And if you want to know exactly what wavelength interval that band corresponds to, you can look up uh, that information on Google for the Landsat 7 satellite. Um, and the last thing we're going to do is just simplify this a little bit so that we can use the data more easily. And we're just going to rename the files. Um, and we're basically going to take them, we'll start at the top, and we're going to convert all this uh, to just mid-2002. And then we'll do it for this one. And that's just shorthand for Middlebury 2002. Um, just gets rid of all that clunky extra text. So I'm going to pause, and I'm going to do that for all of them, and then we'll finish the video.
Okay, so I've finished renaming the files, and here they all are. Here's our metadata, band 1, band 2, band 3, band 4. They all should have that same root name of mid underscore 2002 underscore. And I just thought I'd finish by um, actually tying these into the actual spectral bands that they were collected in. Um, and you can find this in the metadata also, but we'll just look at it quickly in a, a chart I found on Google. So band 1 of Landsat 7 corresponds roughly to blue. Band 2 is roughly to green, 3 to red. Band 4 is the near-infrared. Um, 5 and 7 here. And 6 actually isn't shown. 6 actually is an infrared band that's way out here at the higher wavelength. And then importantly, this band 8 is what we call the panchromatic band. It's a band that was collected across a wide bandwidth, so a wide range of wavelengths. And because it's collected across that wider range of wavelengths, it actually is able to have a higher spatial resolution. It actually has 15 meter pixels instead of 30 meter pixels. And you can see that here. If you look at this file for band 8, you'll see it's 222 megabytes where most of the other files are 56 megabytes. That's because these are all 30 meter pixels, and this band is actually 15 meter pixels. So there's a lot more information to store for the same size image. All right, well that wraps up our video about downloading Landsat images. Join us for the next video where we'll go ahead and composite these bands into a multi-band raster in ArcMap. Thanks a lot.